everybody welcome back to another exciting episode of the over sharon show uh we have a guest today but before we get into that um i'm gonna say hi thank you guys thank you everybody in the chat for coming here and hanging out with us you guys are the best anyway i just wanted to say that before i forgot hey sharon how are you today hey hey i'm good hey, not too hey, bad hey. not too shabby yeah, and our guest today is Steve, a.k.a. Zerolath. That's his channel where you can find him on YouTube and various other places, but we'll give him a chance to plug all that. How are you doing today, Steve? Hey, dude. Thanks for thanks for having me on. With all these conversations I've been watching you have on the show, it was just like, oh, man, there's always so much to talk about. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, always so much to overshare. Indeed. Yes. And, uh, and I'm all about... I'm all about oversharing. People just want me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you came to the right show <laughs> because we overshare and that's all we do here. And so, share alike. Um, yep. Exactly. So we're going to start. I offend you while I smash your reality. Yeah, yeah. No, I trust me. I know what that's like. Now I just keep my mouth shut these days unless I'm recording on the oversharing show. That's why I have it. So then I could just share on here. So I have a quote for today and then Sharon's going to pull a card. The quote is, the man who can sincerely thank God for the things which as yet he owns only in imagination has the real faith. And that's by Wallace D. Watts, Waddles. Who's like that a guy? penguin. Wallace the Waddler? Waddler. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a funny good question. Kind of name. I think he's an author from, the quote is dated from 1910. Ah, uh, you must have. Waddles. He, he must be British. Yeah. You must have gotten it from that list of quotes from uh, Archaics. Yeah, channel. I totally did. I had a feeling. Mm. Yeah, he's got a whole video with like really good quotes that I always like to draw from. Yeah, yeah. Nice, you guys. Crazy how crazy how Archaics just like falls into everybody's laps after after X amount of years. He's explained that he's had books written. I'm like, what? My right? notes, tell it's, about it. it's all it's almost like jason is a mandela effect in and of itself this guy's had 17 <laughs> books with all the answers what <laughs> i know right Insane. where have you been this whole time look at that Ooh. the ace of cups oh the ace of cups nice new stories about emotions mm. brandon would you like to overshare or is there a laugh would you like to start yeah why don't you start steve what do you think about the ace of cups Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, a big, a big thing that I worked on on myself as I was deciding to distinguish myself from my peers, uh, looking at what I thought was just, you know, if I keep going with the same attitude, that's very popular among my peers, I'm going to be like a kind of a weaker person. Um, and the journey was, uh, had a lot to do with going through emotional, uh, maturity and, and having that, uh, having that resolve, um, without denying your emotions to have your emotions, but to be in control of your emotions. And, um, and I am, uh, I'm very, I, I, I feel like I'm there. I feel like I'm there, uh, uh, on, on the level that I was at least imagining, um, those many, many, uh, years ago when I sat there and I said, why don't enough people care about how little 9-11 makes any sense, <laughs> you know? So like, I, I, I've been on on that level of transformation uh um really kind of since before that in but you know i was a child at that time right so i had the luxury of of, of living in all of the playthings that um have consumed the psyche of uh my peers that are of my generation you know where um they're living in some weird parallel system of uh, of values that is forged by their personal uh relationship with um with like star wars and and all these things and um and and uh, uh i i'm sitting there and i'm just like 
I, I can't believe that you guys can't bridge um, in a real way the change you need within yourself by um, what you get out of these fictions that you just choose to use as toys when there's cooler stuff that the adults get to do with what these fictions have uh, gifted to your imagination. And, um, Magi. and I didn't feel that for a while because it took a while to me for me to go through the journey that um, needed to look at the occult, needed to look at concepts of, uh, of, of, of energy um, and all these other things that kind of came along with the territory of being interested in ufology, being interested in stopping evil before the next, uh, uh, you know, terrorist attack uh, thwarted by our own people um, were to occur um, and all these different things. And so I was straight up outright into waking people up before uh, woke became uh, a defiled terminology um, by uh, the superficiality of uh, leftist socialist thinking um, back when it was just about the truther movement and truthers uh, had a lot of breathing room to question things because there wasn't as much pain with the truth coming out as it was by the time um, politics changed in 2016. And then all of a sudden, um, there was a strange target on uh, uh, people of my varieties back. It's like, oh, oh, they're, they're, they're flipping the script now. I guess we're winning. The game is now on, right? And then I couldn't have possibly imagined um, my greatest miscalculation was what people's willingness to do um, when 2020 came. That completely flipped my relationship with the entire world, with all of humanity, all the people in it, my parents, various relationships with people. I, I, I just, it's just like, <laughs> it uh, protects you. It protects you, but it really screws you up at the same time. <laughs> yeah, dude, for sure. Um, it was, it's crazy how you used to be able to talk about truth and things like that. Like, even right up till that thing that happened in 2020 that we will not name, I was friends with some people and I was hanging out with them and I'd always talk about like crazy conspiracies and stuff. And then when this happened, they asked me what my opinion was. <laughs> and then I gave it to them and then they stopped hanging out with me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all right. They're lost. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've learned that I leave them a leading piece of information and, um, I let them ask themselves, do you want to hear something that won't make sense to you the first time I say it? That's all. That's basically I lead with something that tells them that. Then I open it up. Planting seeds. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I've, 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 you know, I've met some people recently that I have uh, that are colleagues and, um, you know, they're not. You know, they're not across the threshold. They're just at the point of knowing that it's all screwed up. But then also on an independent level, he was telling me how like, oh, he's actually interested in like uh, the history of ancient Egypt and stuff like that. He's fascinated by the ideas of 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 prehistoric advanced civilizations of various sorts. He's into that kind of thing. And so like while I'm just in the middle of being enriched with the logos of archaics, um, I'm able to also tell him stuff that's like just fresh in my psyche. Like, oh, dude, you see, you got to talk about the Anuna, the Anunnaki, but it's not like the way Zachariah Sitchin told it because he screwed up the timeline. And then you start going through the whole darn thing because um, I, I've been working on so many things. And then like Jason, just like I like went fiendish on that one particular question he was looking for and went through complete objectivism in his process delineating it uh, being very careful about how he uh, establishes his value sets 
um uh you know because he's not trying he doesn't like shitting on good things right like you know it's like zachariah sitchin good things screwed up these particular aspects of it and it has to be it has to be said and that that misconception has to be broken which also means you know you have to uh you have to shatter a sacred cow for uh, some people because sitchin you know sometimes an author like that he gets a bit people of the bookish kind of credit and they people start living by the reality that it's got to fit into the interpretation of Sitchin or you know or Danikin or something like that right it, it comes from a very academic regiment kind of thing and it's kind of like building a brand yeah yeah and all, it's funny how all that ancient alien stuff I was into that stuff years ago I read some Sitchin and Eric von Danikin um and it's like they take the truth and they it's anybody who has any kind of question that questions this reality like you were saying before um and it gives them somewhere to go and somewhere to feel like they're actually looking into things when it's just kind of a trap at the end of the day unless you leave your mind open it's just like the new age you know like the new age they have all these concepts that are really cool but it's just a trap at the end of the day it's a uh, well yeah well i mean the, the, new, the, the new age uh, the new age is kind of um you know it's um the uh the psyop people they love their pacifist types so that gets a whole lot of uh it give they give it a whole lot of attention because it gets people into a state of surrender because they're they're all just dealing with their personal shit while also having the awareness that there's terrible whatever's over there and their their spiritual answer is so like vague you know it's just like who who are you praying to you know creator oh the spirit the the, the this and it's always in the vagueness of oh you know well, we're, we're 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 praying to to a vibrational energy field it, it almost feels like right and it's and i think that comes from the um the Buddhist influence, which is partially grappled because of Lamaism, um, and the Buddhism was kind of a reform of of trying to replace the way the shamanism of the Mongolian uh, uh, civilization, uh, the Mongolian peoples were around the just around and before the time of the Khans, right? And so there's this Eastern uh, uh, spiritual discipline. Um, which works in, in India a great deal, works in China a great deal, uh, you know, all this Eastern stuff. Um, and um, there's not much about it coming from a place for um, for the sacred warrior, right? Uh, uh, everything is kind of feminized. Everything's feminized. Everything's sanitized. Um, uh, 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 there's very little consideration for shadow work. And, uh, you know, all of us here, you know, we, we all have a common bond under things like Owen Benjamin and shadow work, right? Uh, <laughs> even if those things maybe don't relate to each other, we relate to each other through both of those things, plus many, many more. Yeah, yeah. right. Absolutely. And, and, um, and, I've, and I've noticed, and it's why I never became a new wager, but I played in their pool to uh get the the gnosis if you will to to catch to catch the the vibes to learn a thing or two about energy and stuff and there's still some new agey <clears throat> things about me i do qigong i do qigong in the most heathen way you could possibly imagine but it's qigong nonetheless <laughs> that's really awesome and so like you speaking about you're starting to speak about the spiritual stuff and uh before we get into the questions that we have for you because this discussion is mostly kind of we want to gear it toward like knowing about your spiritual journey yeah like how it began and you know we just have some questions for you so um for sure, sure i'll do my best because it, it 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 comes so intermixed in in there with me because of my you know just i had to walk various stories together but um but yeah i'll keep it focused okay so i wanted to start by asking you like how you grew up, what kind of background, was it Christian, was it whatever it was? And then, um, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll just start with that. Right, I was um, I was raised here um, where I live now. I've always lived here uh, in a uh, Italian Catholic 
uh, family of, uh, you know, of the, the Catholic ilk that you uh, get out of like the Hudson Valley area of New York, um, which uh, has a lot of uh, interesting values. Uh, but my grandfather on my father's side was Protestant. Um, and uh, th- that, that, that side of it is part of um, the Norse aspect of my ancestral journey, but that comes much later because that's very, very recent uh, in my life. This, this heathen awakening is when I became certain that was the answer uh, uh, I was looking for to particular aspects of this chapter of my life. Um, and um, I had a, uh, uh, there was a certain point where I just kind of hated um, uh, Sunday school stuff and the church stuff. And uh, it, it was just like, I don't know, something's really weird with all this stuff. Like, cause you know, like the, there's the biggest problem with the church, which it takes a long time of reconciling what you're looking at is, is that the church is a pagan amalgamation trying to shove all of these particular things that match uh, a biblical rationale into one god that used to be a particular pagan god and then over time a group of people um uh, put all of creation for everybody in their will upon this god (laughs) <laughs> as uh, what I believe is a misrepresentation, right? So you're seeing like all these uh, disparate um, uh, uh, beliefs that have been mixed together without any like respect to where they came from, uh, and always in the context of uh, of the uh, of these uh, terrible ways for people that were being sinners and were going to uh, burn in hell. Uh, uh, and uh, and look at how bad their lives were because they weren't uh, part of the church. And look at look how the church substantially increased their lives. And and, and that that all seemed like what the th- the situation was. But at the end of the day, my that that might have been all well and good. But um, I, I I had no heart connection with the church uh, because I needed to get away from what were occult elements that I should not that I believed I should not be interacting with because no one, I could trust no one with telling me what it all really meant. Right. It's like at looking back at it, understanding it now from my, uh, from my pagan eyes, it's just like, you know, a young, a young boy, a young girl, they need to have that paternal or and maternal figures that help you go through manhood initiation and they're supposed to bridge the trust on a personal level. They, you don't get sent to school. You don't, you don't give someone to someone else to give, uh, to give them their, their, their values. And I probably on a deeper level just said like, why can't mom and dad just do this, right? That might've been part of it, but also something unsaid because you're also conflicted about your own parents in many ways, you know, at a certain young age. And so you kind of, want to get away from them because you want to see new people now at at this age it's not just about always being around mom and dad making you happy uh uh, with the things they can gift you with when you're being a sweet little boy and all that stuff and so um it was it was always interesting knowing about protestantism and this this whole thing where grandpa did different customs and um you know, and he didn't do the confessional and all that stuff and didn't take communion. Um, and, uh, and, and, and funny enough, didn't like going to the doctor very much either. (laughs) Mm. And I don't, I, I don't know if it was for based reasons. If they were, they must've been deeply, deeply private, but you know, my dad criticizes me for being like that. You know, and he thinks like, ah, oh, you know, you know, and, and look at look how grandpa did. Grandpa was pretty old when he died. You know, he, he died in like 2002. He's part of the World War II generation. And it's just like reasonably, y- you would say that, you know, he, he, you know, he died at a pretty ripe old age. You know, grandma died 20, 20 years later, you know. So um, granted, 
It's not like uh, the health system was doing them a tremendous amount of favors, but I know that my grandfather was in bad health for only a very short period of time before he passed away. Or grandma, being more subject to medicine, went through a whole lot of other kinds of suffering, right? Mm. So there's, 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 uh, there, there's comparatives. Uh, there's comparatives uh, here that like uh, af- affect you in, in different ways, right? Because things were much better for how my grandfather passed, um, just thanks to the times uh, 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 that we were in at that time. Um, but um, but uh, at a certain point in my tweens, um, I met a friend who lived down the street who was the pastor's son at a Pentecostal church. And so I was, I became a born again Christian uh, uh, because I liked what he was saying about uh, Jesus more than what the Catholic idea of Christ is like, or perhaps it was really just maybe like there was a spirit there. Maybe it was the Holy spirit. Maybe it was just, you know, some fairy folk that liked to fuck with white people. I don't know. Um, (laughs) but you know, there was a better spirit, uh, about them. It was better for my social development, my emotional health. Um, you know, I was kind of, I was kind of really screwed up, um, as a kid for having a really bad, uh, uh, um, um, relationship with, uh, with my family. Um, it was very, very weird, but in retrospect, it was because I, I, I kind of had empathic activation, uh, at a very early age or never lost my empathic stuff. Um, when I went through a certain transition out of resistance, uh, because, you know, I, be- I believe, I think I said it earlier, if I didn't, uh, you know, you have to have all your feelings, right. Including the bad ones, because you, you know, like they're there, they don't mean that you're bad, but you are processing, you know, something going on, but it's just feelings. The universe cares about your actions but you do have to process your feelings. Yes. So, uh, so yeah. Um, and, um, by the early two thousands, um, I felt like I had reached a, a limit to my ability to expand in my spirituality with just being a Christian. Um, and I asked myself like, Am I, am I going to go, am I about to go to hell because I'm about to, um, walk away from the church and, and, uh, and, 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 but keep, uh, keep Jesus with me per se, but not really worshiping him, you know, like, like this kind of thing was, was going through me because I, I needed to, I needed to break without and and not because i needed to be a sinner although uh although uh, considering a little bit of premarital sex was definitely there (laughs) but uh not as a freak um uh about it with like too many partners or whatever that just wasn't the way i was uh you know at, at a certain point i just couldn't handle being the kind of person for multiple partners unless it was like something agreed upon with the committed woman but that's uh that's all i'm only mentioning that because you know that's part of you know you're growing up it's all the conflicts moral conflicts right um and uh, trying to do healthy things like that and uh and not trying to just sit there and say um oh because i believe the bible is wrong about certain things and that the church is wrong about certain things that um that i'm going into being a quote sinner unquote um i just wanted to get all the pressure of all of that off of me you know just just get it off of me i need to breathe i need to live and um i still believe in god and if that's not good enough then um i'd rather burn in hell (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right like that that's kind of w- w- where i eventually kind of put myself right um and uh, i can't remember if i put myself there before or after 9 11 but certainly um looking at what the uh the george w bush alleged evangelical neocon christian good guy 
thing going on that I kind of liked about him. And then just looking at what the doofus he was for a year. And then um, the doofus he was after that particular year. Um, while also talking tyrannically uh, in a way that was being glossed over, twisted and pitched by the media. I said, Some, something's very wrong with the way people understand right and wrong. Something's very wrong here. Yeah, it's funny. And, <clears throat> it's like people expect yeah. a Hitler or whatever to be like Hitler was portrayed or whatever. Yeah. You know, you know they let people get away with so much <clears throat> when they act like a doofus. It's freaking hilarious. Yeah, yeah, they, they do. And, um, and, and one of the good things that does come out from giving yourself exposure to the Eastern mysticisms is that um, it's much healthier. Um, I think that before the monotheist situation came on, I think that we understood better right and wrong. And we also under understood that we were not perfect, but that also didn't mean that we allowed wrong to go unpunished. Right. So, um, but you, you took care of it yourself. You didn't beg God to do it. So that way God could be the murderer and not you. You, if you understood that something was done so wrong that the best thing to do is perhaps to extract vengeance and to kill a man. Well, um you've got to really be uh at a healthy measure of uh of reason and heart uh to put yourself there right and um i think a lot of our ancestors were like that um but we lost that long ago where a lot of that was still kept in the east um you know, such as the traditions of the people of Japan, who, uh, you know, they never yielded on uh, on their animism, on the uh, on the Shinto faith uh, and and such. And uh, of course, India, who also never uh, relented in these things. Um, and if you just go back far enough, it, uh, you know, all that stuff makes sense where, you know, it's kind of like what it says in the Bible, but spun in a good way. Yeah, we do know right and wrong. We do. Otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise, we would not tolerate our neighbors. We'd sit there and just somebody makes up the idea of like, my neighbor has been in his house for three hours. Only an evil person is in his house for three hours when the sun is up. I must kill him. He has killed somebody. I know it. Right. Like that's crazy talk. Right. And people think that like th that's what people like will do if there isn't like this one God of the law, you know, and a long, elaborate, complicated explanation of the law, which at the end of the day, when it boils down to your own judgment, you just revert back to um a more rational version of the crazy example that I just gave, where you do an investigation and you find out exactly how wrong has been done. And you also don't worry about things like people's fucking privacy and you let them have as many hours in their house as they want. Cause I don't hear any screaming. Do you? <laughs> All right. You got soundproof walls. Well, well, sure. Well, sure. That's very true. But guess what? If uh, if somebody goes missing, guarantee you, somebody cared about that somebody who went missing. And yeah, uh, exactly. soundproof your walls all you want. Eventually, things will track back to you. Yeah, for sure. And I like what you said, too, about because I, I feel so many people that's they miss that entirely where they they have this whole belief system where they're like, well, here's the law. God knows this. I got to look to God for everything. When it's like, well, if you're in, you're made in his image and you're a creation, don't you think you could be able to tell right and wrong internally on your own? Yeah. And, and even I remember like reading the Bible, like the new Testament, and I think it was the book of Romans. And I think it's at the very beginning, beginning. And he's basically saying like, 
you have it within you to know what, you know, right and wrong, basically. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you do. Yeah. And if you're made in his image, like Brennan said, like, why do you have to put it on God to tell you like, right. you are, you are made in his image. You are God. You can do that yourself. That's why he yeah. gave you a freaking mind, Precise. consciousness and brain and whatnot. <laughs> look, look, if, if, um, if you can do as good as people like us, well, you know, being what any rational person would would know is not some sort of extra special sinner who definitely is evil enough to be in hell because we're certain that's what happens when you don't worship Christ. Um, <laughs> um, with the exception of of that, it's it's like you're turning this alleged orig original sin um, into your greatest strength. You know, and it is the wisdom of the serpent. And so at least Christians will get it when you quote Jesus about being as wise as serpents. And um, they don't even care about the context. So yeah. it's great. You can just say it and they'll, they'll be like, ah, he got me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm schooling yeah. him left serpent and right. Serpent in the garden. <laughs> right. Dare, dare we? Dare we say? Um, so. That was kind of a little bit about your spiritual journey, right? As you're figuring things out, right? Yeah. And so like you, like, I think you said you've come to the point where you're, I can't remember if you said heathen or pagan. And to me, they're very similar. Um, I remember, I feel like Benjamin Balderson talked about the difference between them. And mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, and I could be misquoting him or somebody else, um, but I remember it being like, you're either from the plains or you're from the mountains and one was pagan and one was heathen. And they're basically the same thing. You're just living in accordance with nature. And this, this whole Christian movement of Catholicism or whatever came in and started to get these people and they wanted them in the city. They wanted them in their churches and they couldn't um, get them in there but by demonizing them and calling them these names and literally right. pagan or pagan or heathen just literally meant people just live outside in nature and they demonized it to mean like, Oh, they're not yeah, yeah. Christian like us. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they demonized all, all these different levels of things. Um, you know, the, the, the whole, the reason why, um, uh, they gave, um, Satan horns, uh, they gave the devil horns, uh, is to uh, make you uh, look at any gods, any spirits that were associated with any kind of horned beast and to consider that an evil thing. So you've got like bulls, which of course are named uh, uh, in association with Baal, and we mm. all understand that. But at the same time, the, you know, like some people n didn't, do child sacrifice to bull gods. Uh, they, they may have sacrificed a, a slave. They may have sacrificed, you know, they may have sacrificed, um, um, uh, you know, a, a, a prisoner that, um, uh, that was worthy of death or something uh, along those lines. And then of course, various, you know, animal sacrifices, you sacrifice a cattle to, to the bull, um, so on and, and so forth. Um, and, and all of that stuff is, uh, rituals that go back, um, uh, uh, to their known incarnation, uh, in ancient Sumerian times, ancient Egyptian times. It was, uh, the age of Taurus in our, uh, procession of the equinoxes. The bull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The bull. Pro talks exactly. about that. <laughs> and, and that's, and, and, and it just means Lord it's title, not a name. Right. So there's all sorts of Baals, you know, there's Baal Zabub. It's not Belzebub. It's Baal as his title. It's Lord Zebub, which means the flies. Lord of the, Lord flies. Of the flies. Exactly. Right. Um, and uh, 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 and so when you take a closer examination, I think what the Bible is trying to say about Babylon, as far as the paganism of, of, of it all is is concerned, is that um uh, uh, Babylon, their culture seemed to fluctuate 
between when they were worshiping their gods to when they were worshiping various spirits. And you don't worship spirits. Spirits don't even have their own agency. Spirits are kind of like uh, um, um, uh, sentient programs in the simulation the simulacrum as jason says it or the simulacrum uh in the reality field uh that that permeate in in our in our ether through the conscious plasma right um uh, so so these are these are localized uh, uh spirits of certain things but they are not gods but they build an idol to them and they make offerings to them and they're they're uh they're giving these spirits the god treatment uh, when all they're doing is feeding a, a, a demon, because then that reflects back on them as a tribe, as a whole, because they're taking on uh, uh, the humanized attributes of things. So what does it mean when you're worshiping a spirit of, uh, of, of, of bugs like this, of, of the fleas and the flies and the mosquitoes, perhaps the grasshoppers. I mean, did it fly just literally mean like flies or was it just anything that, that uh, flied. liked to su surround corpses? Was it all about just corpses? So it was just specifically the fly, like the common house fly that we know, is that always the context of the word when they translated it that gets into the etymology? When I finally hit the etymology game, um, it, it answered a tremendous amount of questions. That reminds me of like syncretism and um, astrotheology and the stuff that Santos talks about because he yeah. can always relate words by their etymology. He can just always relate words, even though our modern <laughs> etymology won't tell you, but he'll just say words and then he'll like extrapolate all these words like Adam. A D A M and A T O M and yeah. etum. See, like etymology, Adam. Yeah. Et like even that could be related to that word. So right, if you just like right. break stuff down, it's really. Um, yeah. It's, 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 um, it's certain relationships between certain vowels and consonants, right? Vowels are highly fluid. So, mm -hmm. uh, and especially if you are dealing with, uh, various manners of subconscious magic uh like uh like kabbalistic magic and whatnot um uh, uh you'll notice it in the sigil craft if you uh, ever read up on how you make sigils um you take um uh you take out all the vowels and any repeating consonants of the word that you are crafting into its archaic uh and occulted form as a sigil to uh uh, manipulate the emotion of the subject, right? And I manipulate's got a negative connotation to it, and I, I and I'm making a neutral connotation. I just want you to understand when I say manipulate, because uh, I do sigil craft myself with the runes. Um, so um, you know, you get like T and D. Um, those, if you if you just go T, you just go D. You'll realize that um, both of them just involve. Uh, um, uh, an air passage blockage where the tip of the tongue hits the roof of the mouth to shape the sound, right? Uh, there's a name for consonants um, that fit that model. I'm trying to remember where my etymology book There is. stops. Yeah. There, there stops because they stop. So I studied uh, linguistics and pheno uh, phonetics and phonology. And so those are the P, T, and K and the B, D, and the G, they're voiced and voiceless counterparts of each other. So P and ba, and if you for like P and ba, T and da, K and ga. So if you put your hand on your, your fingers on your voice box and you say like P, like you say P, 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 or B, 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 you'll notice they have the same placement in the mouth uh, when you're making the vocalization or the, I guess the, the mouth, the mouth movement. But, but when you say, p, 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 there's no voice when you say, b, 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 you're activating your voice box. So they're the same. And that's the same with T and D. So you have t, t, t and d, 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 d. and then, uh, put, uh, and, oh, and then K and G. So you have k, 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 and g, g, g. So they're voiced and voiceless counterparts of each other. So when you have like a word like 
like British will say butter and Americans will say butter. It's because right. it's vowels are always voiced in at least in English, vowels are always voiced. So when you're saying the uh and then the er, the uh is voiced because ah, uh, you can feel your voice box, and then mm-hmm. er, that's voiced. So in British English, they'll say but er or ah, uh, but ta. So they'll they'll stop voicing to say the t sound then they'll voice again in english we don't we don't stop to 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 stop our voice we just keep our voice going so we just say butter like we never stop and go t <laughs> so that's what happens with words like but butter and better and things like that they use the same the same placement, but yeah. they activate or deactivate the the voice. Interesting. Mm. In um, this is my uh, my favorite um, etymology book. Uh, those of you who have uh, seen me on one of my Made by Jim Bob appearances on one of the shows, I show off this book, "The Origin of English Words: A Discursive Dictionary of Indo-European Roots" by Joseph T. Shipley. This is uh, quite. Like this is some heavy duty uh, uh, reading, like, you know, like you get into all these prefixes and suffixes, like simple stuff. And it'll be like pages, pages of stuff like like key K E R there that like this page alone is like that's like the fourth variation, several pages on just K E R five or six different contexts and origins of K E R cur, right? So in this one, in the preface, before it gets into the word uh, uh, origins, it gets into uh, the actual um, uh, uh, oral tradition uh, mechanics. And there's a passage called consonant shiftings, and you'll like this. Many of the consonantal, uh, uh, hold on, consonantal. Consonantal or whatever. Yes, <laughs> variations have been set into a, pa- a pattern known as Grimm's Law, established in 1822 by the fairy tale man Jacob Grimm. Here it is as applied to English. Now, we obviously we all have to do our our work about like Grimm is definitely uh, somebody who had an agenda, not saying otherwise. um, But this is yet still just knowing that that's part of what we're dealing with. Right. And this part could be actually good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Words that in early time began with one of the sounds listed below may later have changed to the next sound to the right. So um, there are three types, gutturals, dentals, and labials. Those are the three different ways that we use our mouths to make various uh, sounds. Um, so, So just to interrupt you real quick, you have the, the p and the ba, those are labials because you're using p, ba to stop the sound. And they're called stops because they actually stop, sound, like they stop the breath from going through. So you can't mm-hmm. say p and keep saying it forever. You just say p and it stops. Mm-hmm. So, th- so then you, those are labials. Then you have the t and the da, those are dentals. And then you have k and g, and those are gutturals. Yes, yes. Excellent. Excellent. So you, yeah, you know, it. all of that is, is, is right, is right in here. It gives ex- examples. So gutturals, uh, uh, are, um, genus kin, uh, I don't know if that's choler or Kohler. Kohler. It has to Kohler. be cuh because yeah, yeah. then that's guttural. Yeah. Gall host guest, and then dentals dual two triple three fume dust and then labials bucket pocket paternal fatherly fragile break yeah so yeah there's all sorts of details like that in this book and i thought it was interesting that there were three of those because of my interests in um in uh, metaphysical manifestations of trinities um that are nothing like the trinity <laughs> the trinity how the dare trinity, you trinitarians <laughs> saint nicholas was a trinitarian fuck that guy how dare he 
So um, just to kind of get more into your thoughts on like, where you at, where are you at in your journey and your spiritual journey? You said, did you say you're a heathen? Yeah, and if I, you can explain. You know, I, I'm a heathen. I'm a pagan. I'm an animist, et cetera, et cetera. I, okay. I, I'm kind you of fluid. Really I'm, have I'm, a... I'm kind of fluid with it because okay. I'm kind of building all of the different uh, contexts that those mean. I can't call myself a pagan all the time because, well, it's it's about a man off the land, right? There's plenty right. of times I'm, I'm in the suburbs. I've got a garden that I'm experimenting with because I'm not great at gardening. Right. So theoretically calling myself a pagan is only pseudo true right. in the context. That's why I don't call myself who... anything. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, but heathen, you know, heathen is, uh, has got a very, um, it's a little bit, it feels a little bit more broadly inclusive that you don't necessarily have to be like always one of the land you know because i'm i'm in civilization as much as i am in the wild okay cool sharon is a sharitarian sure i'm just a sharonite <laughs> sharonite um so some of the things that you that i've seen you talk about or that i feel like you know about include things like norse mythology odin or odin i don't know how you called him mm. uh runes um and maybe the havamal i don't even know if i'm pronouncing that correctly yes you did mm -hmm. okay can you talk a little bit about some of those things and how they relate to what you've looked into and how you you know how you use them or how you're comfortable with them mm. etc um at a certain yeah at at, at a certain point um you know, I went and I um, had put my uh, my study focus involving, uh, you know, ancient history um, uh, into kind of, you know, fixing what seemed to be stolen from the memories of uh, of, of basically the European men and the, and the men of North, uh, the men of North America that came from Europe, you know, the, uh, the, the you know, the white man, et cetera, et cetera the Northmen, if you will. And, um, and in this, I was getting, uh, I was learning about all the different things that were like, oh, yeah, you know, this quality that you learned uh, uh, was there with the Catholics. Oh, yeah, that was totally gaslit. That was like, that was like the, uh, you know, oh, that was Odin. That was Odin or Odin. It, you can pronounce it both ways. It, it It's both of them are are equally true the ode or the oath it's uh you know it's it's a little bit tomato tomato uh because of variance in tribes uh in, in in families that were of um those particular cults um and their understanding of the all father um and, and so you know it's where so, we get the word wednesday odin's day Yes, that's that's yes, that's from the more Germanic Votanas. Mm. That's Votan. Yes. Um, and so that's like part of Odin's reach uh, to the east, because that's like the way the you know, that's like the Germans, um, uh, you know, the, the more Western Baltic uh, people before it kind of shifts over to being more like Perun focused, which is the Slavic version of Thor. Uh, so on and so forth. And um, when I started to understand um, the qualities of the gods uh, in men that um, were there and applied with um, with uh, with with Odin or Freyr and Freyr like Baal means Lord, by the way, it's a completely different meaning of of Lord. Right. So um, that's that's just what it what you said um, when referring uh, to your to your God, if you were one who was akin to the Vanir way of the gods, uh, which is uh, a, a bit more a bit different, more on the primal side than what the, uh, the than what the more Aesir oriented cults like Thor and and Odin would be, because they are sky gods. There's much more going on um, with um, the interest in the heavens. Where with the Vanir, it's much more of an interest on the earth, the, the natural world on the earth versus 
per se the uh, what is flies in the air, what is cosmic in the uh, in 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 the heavens inspiring you, right? So that has a lot to do uh, with how different tribes would shape their mindsets, right? And so you, you can play off of that because there's more horned uh, uh, god references for um, for Vanir gods because of all the various horned beasts that would be of uh, a Vanir domain, right? Can you, so, can you say that word Vanir and can you spell it? I don't know that I've come across it. Okay, Vanir. Vanir is V A N I R. Uh, okay. Uh, Van, the Vanir, uh, the, the name basically kind of means like the wind, right? And in, it's in context to, um, to these, uh, uh, to the nature spirits, the earth, the earth spirits, you know, like when, when you're on that hike and you're seeing the deer and the coyotes and, 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 and the various birds and all that stuff that is Frey and Freyr's realm right uh you are you are walking amongst their spirits that is the lord and the lady of the earth and um you will show them the respect and the love um that they would show you okay and Fr Frer and freya are is freya where we get friday yes uh both both uh yeah both freya and Frer. uh uh I think it's I think they made Friday out of all of those. So it's also Frigga, who is a different goddess mm -hmm. than Freya. I used to think they were the same goddess in different contexts. I would have thought the same. Okay. Yeah, but they're 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 actually not. Frigga is the cosmic mother. She's a, mm -hmm. she's an Aesir goddess. She's um she's represented, her and Odin are both represented by Ursa Major. Under certain contexts, Ursa Major tells stories of Frigga, and under other contexts, Ursa Major tells stories about Odin. Uh, um, so it's Odin and Frigga. Uh, it, it depends on the time of the year uh, uh, as well, um, because it's it's the position of Ursa Major uh, that determines things like Odin hanging off the world tree for nine nights, which is uh, effectively um i think that's when ursa major is uh is facing uh south on the grand clock you know what i mean yes awesome you're gonna Thank put you. your button down mm. so um yeah so tell us a little bit about runes and how you use them well, that's a great question because we were just talking about Odin. I just mentioned him hanging from Yggdrasil, which is the origin of the runes themselves. So the runes is a word. The word itself means secret or whisper. Um, and what this means in the deeper context is, is that um, it is a secret coded um, uh, uh, language that unlocks uh, powerful uh, magic uh, <clears throat> from these seed sounds of creation uh, from within the fire element. Even even runes that have uh, that don't seem to have an association with fire at all. The rune, by its energetic merit, when you understand it deepest, it's all it's all fire because it, it 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 comes <clears throat> it comes from. Um, there's a deep meditation over fire that comes from. Uh, 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 understanding uh, uh, the way we talk in that respect. And uh, there's uh, people's language patterns uh, reflect the element of their, of their greater family or familial relationship, which this gets back to ancient, ancient um, uh, 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 stories such as the Hopi and uh, the Hopi talk about how the four tribes broke up. Right. And so men of the North uh, uh, the, who became the white men, um they went north to master fire and so uh, their language would derive some of their magic much of their magic because of invocations so the sounds that are made by things that burn would be uh sounds that the primitive language uh, uh that came up of from the northern tongue would come through with them uh and that's why uh, uh, the white man 
uh, has a general way of speaking that he does that you can hear in cadence and tone and texture uh, 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 that has got a certain familiarity to the ear. And then um, I, I've noticed that, like, if you ever listen to like uh, the Navajo, the Diné language, it's a very, it's a very uh, rough language. It almost sounds like the sounds of sandpaper uh, or stompings or thuddings, right? It's it's earth earth hitting earth that's an earth language earth invocation uh, uh magic it, it, you you get access to all the elements uh through your magic but you have to go through your your element uh primary as part of your core i mean it's going to be there because it's going to be in your language which is important to uh releasing that purest form of what that comes from because it's coming from a deep emotional place that honors the ancestors and uh that gets you in a healthier uh connection uh with uh the power that the gods gifted us with yeah awesome. it's funny you mentioned that because uh really quickly if you think about how people talk in like tribal africa they have all these like clicks and pops that might be associated with water yes exactly Crazy. Exactly. water like when it's like you know when it's like dripping uh -huh. yeah, yeah. That, that precisely knows. precisely yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's and and you look at the you look at the relationship between the men of the north and the men of the south. Um, and, um, uh, uh, you know, like when when like a race riot happens, it's because the men of the north turn up their heat on the men of the south and we're boiling their water. Wow. We're boiling their water and and we don't realize that we're doing it because we've forgotten about our unconscious uh, magic. Wow. Alistair Crowley said that we do, uh, uh, that, that everybody does magic unconsciously, usually. Well, it's like the media. The media knows how to do it, though. We all haven't forgotten. The media knows how to get that water boiling. Right. But all, all they think that they're doing is, uh, is, is ethical uh, uh, manipulation through marketing, right? Like, like you know, like ethics is a ethics and morality is a different thing in like the marketing world where like all these campaign guys, it's just like, they're not evil, but they, they just get paid to use their, their, their speech craft. I right? always um, hated marketing. Right. Exactly. You know? Um, and you know, they're, they're corrupted, like to use the Lord of the Rings parlance that we love, you know, the media is like Saruman <clears throat> and the books affirm this because in a couple of, of different places in the book, they remind you that Saruman was, was, a, was a master word crafter. He knew how to uh, grip people uh, uh, and inspire them one way or the other with their emotions and, 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 and the way his words worked. And that's how he got the, um, the wild men to, uh, to start sacking uh, people of Rohan and things like that, right? It's the same thing with like, you know, uh, um, you know, to telling all these kids, um, you know, that the, 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 the enemy is not this guy, it's that guy. And then all of a sudden they're all antifa up and going to war over whatever, exploiting them, them unconsciously. And you as the wizard knew, knew better, right? Yep. But they're still at the end of the day, though. The problem is that, well, the way I believe they might view it ethically as they're getting people to still choose to do that. They're not forcing right. anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pre precisely. And it's, it's part of the karmic contract game uh, uh, that they're playing. Um, and many of our laws also reflect that. So, um, uh, which is why it's a part of our big responsibility to, uh, to try to plant those, those, those seeds, because there's plenty of good people that have, sadly very good reasons for doing things they don't even realize are foolish oh yeah totally yeah could, that's pretty much the whole the whole country i would say right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but um anyway, yeah back to runes yeah, but yeah. To, well to, to, and before you go back to runes i just wanted to know you mentioned oops you mentioned the fire the people that speak fire and the people right. that speak earth like yep. the natives and then the like brandon was saying the africans yeah. that speak like water yeah and who what's air that's the asians oh that's oh. why that's why in in asia you get what you get breathing meditation 
consistently, Qigong work, all of this involves the air. Mm. All of it is energies in, in the air, the breath work, the, the, you know, your, your holy prana, um, the Qigong energy work, uh, uh, things you do in, in martial arts is, is about having your body know how to cut through with, with, uh, with little, uh, wind resistance, right. Mm -hmm. To blade your body, uh, uh, to move fluently and have, have the air, have the atmosphere, uh, work in your favor. And then of course you eventually get, you're eventually talking about actual sword play too. And, uh, you know, this is also considering how, uh, the airflow, um, when you are slicing with this, this mm -hmm. blade, which, you know, sword is a blade, uh, uh, a, a, a airplane wing is a blade, a helicopter, uh, rudder is a wing is a blade, you know, in the way it cuts through the air, uh, and their language, uh, re reflects that as well. There's a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of, um, it's, um, it's hard to it's hard to explain. Uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a good example would be um, when I'm doing martial arts. Uh, you know, when I'm doing my uh, uh, my kickboxing and my boxing uh, 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 practices. Um, when I do a strike, sa, it's it's I usually go sa sa like that, and it's s right, and it's out like that, which is very snake like too, because um, you know you're working off of your reflexes, and it's good to get a little snaky about all that uh with your reflexes um how dare you yeah but um but you know it's tones that that cut through the air like the s like the s sound you know you get a lot of that um uh, uh there's just something very on the air about about the asian language it's well, also yeah, very I mean, interesting that they write um sometimes uh uh in in odd ways like like vertically or or uh right, or to, right left. to left yeah yeah oh wow. yeah, at least think about how the japanese speak too you know it's like it's like very forceful in that way same thing with like chinese i think it's yeah. like cantonese they're like you get a lot of that like that air noise oh, yeah yeah there's there's a little there's a little bit more kind of like you're pushing and accentuating on those vowels um to push air more so mm -hmm. when you when you when you speak because your speaking is more focused on on the uh, on the air like that right or i think that here when we're speaking in in this tongue um there's something more about just like my words need to to charge you up right it's just like uh you know uh, i need to to light a fire of inspiration and and so the tone has uh um uh uh it uses a lot more uh consonants to uh just break up the sound in ways that are that are in that are interesting and um kind of like feed the fire to you in healthy levels instead of trying to burn you with everything that we have to say. And that's sort of the way that I think about it. Yeah. I also couldn't help but notice that um, swords represent air in the tarot as well. When yes. To... Yes, because uh, yes, because it's representative of the tongue uh, and, and our words and 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 why it's associated with the mind. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Good so that was sure. all aside, an aside about runes. <laughs> oh, it's all related. It, and it especially is. for me, we, you know, you talk about runes, we can easily talk about tarot because if anybody knows um, uh, how I do readings, I synthesize uh, in each position a, a, a rune with a tarot card. I'm one of the few guys um, out there who has experimented with this divina divination uh, merging practice and have unlocked a really powerful kind of multi-dimensional reading uh ability that i can do for people and uh, you guys have both uh gotten readings uh from me in this style that i do so i know that you can you can testify uh as you as you will or you can throw me under the bus right now you bastard <laughs> <laughs> um, well speaking of that how can people find you if they do want a reading we'll say it at the end too big yeah 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 on. for sure um <clears throat> my email zerolath z-e-r-i-l-a-t-h just like you will see right there 
Zerolath at freedomslips.com. That's freedom, F-R-E-E-D-O-M, slips, S-L-I-P-S. And you can also find me, my YouTube channel, uh, forward slash Zerolath, spelled the same exact way, obviously. Those are those are the best ways uh, uh, to follow me, and the, the more of my social media links are there. Maybe I'll just get a link tree now because it's it's getting like that. <laughs> and I, you know something I will say about your readings. I remember one of the first readings you gave me, and I think it was around the fourth of July last year, so it was just about a year ago. If that was the first one, um, then that one is on my channel. Oh, we, we recorded but it, right? Yeah, it? we we we, were, we recorded it, and then I made a whole uh, slideshow. Uh, oh yeah, uh, for it too. And I still was remember it at your that. was it at your meetup like your mini meetup that you had at your house? Yeah, the yes. little mini meetup by Bear yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like our it was like the first or second time we had hung out or something like that. It was great. Yeah, and I remember you pulled a rune that represented surrender, and it looked kind of like a peace symbol. So we talked yeah. about how the differences between peace, the peace movement, and being. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of like it's rid of the masculine aspect of it, but or, or and then you explain surrender and what that actually meant and what it means to surrender some certain things that you are out of your control that you just have to kind mm -hmm. of give up to God, if you will. You have to yeah. surrender. Yeah. In the Elder Futh Ark system, mm -hmm. um the, the rune called El Haj or Al Jiz, it it, it it can be pronounced uh either way in fluctuation. Um, it, it represents the elk. It basically means elk. Uh, and it, it specifically is, is about the concept of, uh, of, of protection, but it's, it's, it's like a, a mental protection, right? It's, um, uh, uh, the elk is, is a, uh, is an antlered animal, right? And so those antlers come out the head, uh, at either side of uh, of the center of the forehead which for on a man if he were to have antlers that would be um the third eye uh area that it's uh, that it pops out of and so the, the antlers they represent kind of like the psychic shield that we have the antlers are only deadly um if you are the aggressor right um because uh you know the elk the deer all these different types um they don't want to use that stuff they just want to be left alone but uh, if uh, they feel like they're backed up against a wall um you know if you ever seen how an elk moves an elk doesn't do backwards very well they don't like backwards they can be kind of lateral but they'd rather go forward and they will impale you to save their lives <laughs> right but it's because they're defending themselves as um, all of God's creatures have the natural inherent right to do. Um, and so this is about invoking the, that defense in yourself, a defense that is not a threat to anyone except those who are a threat to you. It's a psychic defense on this level. Now in other systems, um, uh, uh, they play it differently with the concept of Merc stave or when the rune is upside down which means that the energy is blocked and that is when it looks like the peace sign if it's within a circle that means surrender right which that's that's the gravel on it that's the twist right is that um it doesn't mean peace it means surrender mm. which um peace is a result of surrender but that's only peace for the winning party Right. Yeah. And in other systems, um, at least as a writing mechanic, because of the way they play with with their sounds. And I don't know all of that too well yet. Uh, but in various levels of the writing system, you'll see that Algy's rune uh, upside down. And that means something different. And also Algy's is, is supposed to be the Z sound, by the way. Right. So uh, uh, um so it, it's one of my favorite runes for all sorts of various reasons, including the fact that it's associated with my pseudonym here, Zerolath. <laughs> Indeed. Do you have some of the runes there with you that you could? I've got all 24 of my Elder Futhar. And you say Elder what? These are the Elder Futhark. 
they're called the Elder Futhark because these are from the oldest uh, known um, uh, full runic alphabet that we have seen on various uh, 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 standing stones and things of this nature. Uh, and um, it's called Futhark uh, because that's the first um, uh, the first six letters of it spell uh and can pronounce can pronounce the word foo thark f-u-t-h is one word the uh a r k or c if you will um so i've got a whole bit of them here this here was made out of um i don't know which uh what kind of uh tree uh, this was this was a stick I found in, in the forest that I had cut up, and so like, like this is uh this is uh one of them here. I so these I carved myself. So, um, I cut a uh, I cut a branch into a chip, and then with a soldering uh, uh pen, I burned in the uh, uh the futhark. Um, then I used a um a drill bit to uh, give it more depth and definition and to smooth uh, and to smooth out um, uh, the, 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 uh, the burn, the burning um, dots, because you're kind of, you're jamming it in and you're going eh, 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 into the wood. It's almost like you're tattooing the wood when you use the, uh, <laughs> uh, the soldering uh, pen this particular way. Um, here's uh, here's a wash. Um, it's, it's, uh, the original way it was held like this, um, at a certain point, they started putting a wash this way because it's the EH sound. Eh, and then that became where we get our, uh, letter E from is so, cause it looks like a, a uppercase M turned on its side. And that's where we get the letter E, uh, in, in the regular alphabet is a uh, derivative of a wash turned on its side. Um, and so there's 24 uh that are like this this is uwaj this is the e sound it's usually like an ei sound basically e and uh, uh this is associated with the yew tree which is associated with death and rebirth because of its uh of the poison poisonous uh uh fumes that are given off by this yew tree and the fact that it's uh the tree goes it goes in and out of the ground like this and so um the trunk of the tree eventually curves back in becomes the roots of the tree and then will pop back up and become the trunk of a tree again and it'll it'll like snake it'll snake through the through the ground up and down like that wow. like a sine wave interesting because michael tessarion <clears throat> i've heard him say that the roots of the word jew are from you from the U tree maybe that's where they got it from so that's pretty interesting to know that note that it's like a snake interesting bury itself in the ground and pop back up and then go back yeah. in the ground i'm not it's, saying anything I'm and just, that's, that's interesting because we're also talking about jew is also for judah the tribe of judah which the tribe of judah was the lion tribe allegedly yeah allegedly that's what i heard everybody i'm just saying yeah, yeah. exactly right <laughs> Hey, look, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in, in, uh, in, in getting uh, Yahweh back into like pagan standards. I don't mind Yahweh's existence. It makes a lot more sense when you, when you limit him to the same level as all the other pagan gods in their station, in their agency. <laughs> Do you think uh, Yahweh? Was... Yahweh's a fairly Saturnian deity, and that's okay. <laughs> I think it's like anything. It just depends. It's like any symbol. It could be used positively or negatively in that same way. So yeah, it's just that yeah, like just like Yahweh was religiousized so long ago and so uprooted um, uh, by the tribe that preserved um, uh, um, the discipline and then preserved this the uh, the scrolls and the scriptures uh, that they wrote. Um, uh, you know that they uh, when they forgot whatever was going on with their oral tradition, they just became super literalist about it and became as, uh, uh, as uh, Jordan Maxwell called them uh, and others uh, called them before him were the people of the book. 
because that's like no offense guys but uh christians muslims hebrews and any other faith that is chapter and versing through life you are people of the book you are in a book club that poses as spirituality <laughs> well with you saying that i um i watched an archaics recently um i think it was the one with open your reality and it's it's a couple of hours and it's really really good and he basically talks about like at the very beginning like literally the first 20 minutes he's talking about how he went into prison uh, a ba basically a baptist right and still holding on to those christian traditions in his mind that you know it's christian and i'm going to prove it by reading all these books and he started reading all these books which led him to read he read the bible multiple times over which led him to read the book of joshua which was like because it kept saying in in like the book of kings or one of those books is like yeah as it is written in the book of joshua so he went and looked for that book and yeah. that took him to all the apocryphal texts. i think it was, i think it was actually judges right that that like somebody had finagled the book of joshua uh to say that it was the book uh, that a, that joshua was a man who was one of the judges but joshua was not a, a pro a pronoun he said it was not a, a it was a it was not a name yeah it, yeah it was not like i mean it, it was the name of the book but it wasn't named after a guy's name. It, it, it had a it had a very particular meaning, um, and maybe somebody called their son Joshua, and then he wrote something down. But that's not yeah. what the book of Joshua is. The, the book of jo I forget what he said that it was, but it was titled as was what its record was about. Yeah. So um, all that said, he had looked through all, he read through all these apocryphal texts, pseudepigraphal texts, and he came to the realization that the, the book of Genesis and the book of Revelation are basically bookends to material that was taken from, and, and I'm guessing it's right. the, the Old Testament, that's material that's taken from babylon from the akkadians from all yeah. these other places and these peoples these jewish peoples or whoever they were hebrew peoples co-opted the the content and made it their own and so this this yahweh they made him their god whereas it there there was no mention of yahweh in the old testament at all ever but all of a sudden in the book of exodus this Yahweh appears. So it doesn't, he's, he said he was reading through uh, Genesis yeah. and, and he's like, if you take Genesis and you read Genesis and then you read revelation, he's like, it's like, those are those like almost came from the same place, but all the other stuff in between did not come from right. them. It's like, they took that material and then made it their own and, and put it in a book and made it their own. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now I know that he said that Exodus was a big issue. Um, but I didn't, um, I have to, I have to double check on a few things. Cause I didn't, re I didn't quite remember any of those other details myself, but, um, I didn't get that from the open reality interview. I got that because he is, he said it in one of his other videos too, cause he's repeated himself, um, uh, a number of times to, uh, uh, when he's uh, elaborating on a prior point. Right, right. So um, I have to check that one out because, yeah, it is long. I think it's three hours, and I just haven't had three it hours was, yet. It was two. It was an hour yeah. and 50 minutes. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's it's extensive, but it's very yeah. – and it's literally – he's talking about that in the first 20 minutes. I mean, he goes a little bit longer than that, but, you know, first 15 minutes, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is, like, incredible right right yeah 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 because i i because it's the bit about where yahweh pops up i yeah. could have sworn that yahweh that he did affirm that in the original text yahweh did pop up in genesis but it's no it he said two. no okay he said all right it's then, not, I, all right, then I, wanna, I want to i definitely want to double check that because um in all the bible uh, uh hebrew translations that i've understood is yahweh 
gets thrown in there in chapter two. And that's why everybody's always talking. And I know Jason well, mentioned they, this too. They say There's the two Lord. Adam right. No, no. They say the Lord in the English. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But um, they say the Lord in the English in chapter two. But that's substituted for Yahweh in the Hebrew. It says Yahweh in the Hebrew. In the I'm going to, I can go, I can go look. Cause I have this book that has the ancient Hebrew. Okay. And I okay. can go yeah, look. Yeah. Show, show me what's, uh, yeah. Show me what's up with that. Cause that's, um, that's all well and good. Cause Lord, um, I'll be right back. Keep it. Sure. Keep it yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Cause I know that Lord is, um, yeah, I know that they, they inserted Lord in there. That well, they also used Elohim. All, well, yeah, yeah, they they're, they consistently use Elohim. <clears throat> Sometimes they're like Yahweh Elohim, right? So, w w which says one particular thing, right? Okay, it's an interlinear scripture. Great, great. Very interesting. Um, what I what I do know is is that um, it's not spelled in its pronunciation from the program of interlinear that I use for it, the interlinear scripture analyzer, the ISA, um, uh, where it doesn't, it's not Y H W H in the transliteration. Uh, it's, it's like a series of vowels. It's like, I think there's like no consonants in it. It's like, yayo or something like that. It's all, it's almost, it's almost like you're trying to say a E I O U. Right. Okay, so I, saying all the vowels in order. So I'm just looking like, for example, in Genesis um, two ish two, and it's like Yahuwah Elohim. But so what I'm and that's what they're calling God, right? Yahuwah Elohim. Right. And um, what my thoughts are like is that they went back and they edited Genesis to reflect the name Yahuwah. I'm just going to guess because like in Exodus, how did, how did, yeah, I'm just, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> no, no, I get you. Well, what, one of the other issues is, is that if you read um, Genesis two, four, where they first say Yahweh Elohim, yeah, that's it where starts I off by saying, these are the chronicle records. Um, the, here's the here's one of the other things. There are not 31 chapters or 31 verses to Genesis uh, 1. There's actually uh, 33 because 2 1, 2 2, and 2 3 are supposed to be tagged off to the end of chapter 1. And then you start chapter 2 at what the standardized Bible has made verse 4. Okay, I'm going to read the in verse uh, starting from Genesis 2 1. Thus were finished the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them and ended Elohim on the day seventh, his work which he had made and he rested on the day seventh from all, all his work which he had made and blessed Elohim day the seventh and sanctified it because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which, which created Elohim and made these. And then, okay. And that's, that's it. That's the end of verse three of chapter two. And then it says, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day made that Yahuwah Elohim, which they hadn't said before. Yes. The earth and the heavens and yeah. every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I'm just going to show yeah, this yeah. so you guys can see. No, no, no. It's all good. Uh, do no, I I'm have... just saying so you can see how it looks. For sure. Do I have share screen permission? I could give it to you. Give All it right. To me. All right, you're good. All right. So here, you guys should be able to see that. This is my inner scripture analyzer. So here's Genesis 2-4 for me, right? So um, 
here it gives you at the top is the concordant literal version translation. Uh, these are the chronicle records of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that Yahweh Elohim made earth and heavens. And then you can see the Hebrew um, as it was written, the phonetic pronunciation of the Hebrew, and then the uh, literal meaning of that particular Hebrew word. So it, you can, so I could read this in Hebrew to you. El fuduth ishim ui arts be ebraam beam oshuth aioa alim arts ushim. Right, and so al alim. That's uh, that's how you say Elohim. It's alim, and then Yahweh is I E U E. So it's technically U E. So there's the U right there, actually. U I or I E W E. U E. How dare you? E E. Yeah, how dare you? Or the U tree. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Ishim is uh is the heavens. Ushim. Or, shamim, or shamim, is because heaven. shamim is heaven. The shamim, the shamim. Excuse me. Thank you. Yes, yes. So the shamim, that's the heavens. Uh, the thulduth is genealogical records. So yeah, um, that's all. Yeah, that's all in there. And so there's a there. There's definitely paganism harshly buried in there, and the Bible should not be your source to. Uh, uh, relating to Yahweh on a pagan level, but could it be? We don't make claims. We're just making the point that if you can deconstruct far enough, um, you can already see that it's there in the Bible as a hint. Interesting. Thank you. <laughs> I had another thought because I have this little, um, I'll show it, but you had shown some runes and you said, this is where we get the letter E something like that. Yes. Right. So, um, back when I was studying Hebrew, I had bought myself some stuff to study and learn. And this was basically saying that it's kind of, um, I don't want it to like reflect. Okay. But it's basically showing the various, like, I guess, alleged transitions of our language. And look, I'm uh, Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> Eh, 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 eh. um so like the transitions from where like like the old hebrew or the phoenic Phine like which really mm -hmm. was the phoenician right and how yeah. it like transitioned into like greek and all this other stuff till it became the english language so uh, like sorry the english alphabet i should say right, right. and well, so the, the the influence the influence was crept in and 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 cleverly cleverly shifted um the uh, uh uh what's going on with with the uh with the hebrewic uh people is um it's that our our likeness to what you see in 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 hebrew or sanskrit or, or anything like that it's going much much further back from the indo-european migration aspect of things because uh there is a significant uh asian uh, uh relationship you know this this gets into the origin of the caucasoids um you know and, and uh, I, I can reference once again with archaics um you know he talks about uh this stuff in the anuna files uh and things like that right um and um and and that like the uh, uh uh you know the caucasoid people which would also end up being the people you know the the, the white man the north man uh here um they don't come from the same uh line as those that went through these uh kinds of experiences in in the middle east um even though there's a a certain kind of a relationship the the devastation of the flood uh which then gets us to the point of noah um, is, um, uh, uh, the men of the North didn't have the flood. Uh, what we had was the ice age. It wasn't as long as the academics say that it was, but by the merit that it took the waters a long time to recede. And there were greater winters back then because the, uh, uh, the earth was still, 
going through its shift from the last Phoenix event. Um, um, you had this uh, tremendous Ice Age uh, uh, period, and it was the Ice Age period that killed um, a lot of the prehistoric mammals, and it was not the end of the Ice Age that killed them the way that the scientists say that it did because they had to they had to revise it they had to admit that the woolly mammoth actually was a warm climate animal not a cold climate animal which you know you think oh well it's woolly like how's this how's it stay cool in the summer like <laughs> uh there's a lot of uh, who knows i uh, there's there's Lambs. details that there's a rational explanation for that i haven't looked into it yet because i'm not worried about the woolly mammoth right now what I other animals have like and have one as my, as my and SC they get trimmed <laughs> The, Flint, the Flintstones is actually the future, and it'll be a more advanced civilization, even though we're using our feet to power our cars. Can't wait. <laughs> Indeed. So I have you ever looked into Michael Tessarion's work? And if so, like, how do you feel like it meshes with what Archaics has talked about? Oh, yes. I'm like like Archaics now. I am a Sarion uh, sponge for anything I can get my hands on. Um, I need to get get myself um, a subscription to the Unslave podcast. There's a lot of behind the paywall stuff that I haven't seen, and some that I have thanks to BitChute. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, I definitely uh, consider myself uh, a student of his studies. I think Michael Tsarion's a, 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 a tower of 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 information along with David Whitehead um, and uh, and people know that I am uh, colleagues with a friend of theirs, uh, uh, Sethicus Boza. So shout out to Sethicus Black Earth Productions because uh, I've gone, uh, part of my magical uh, uh, discipline is foundation in initiation with uh, Sethicus, uh, Sethicus's uh, uh, teachings, which uh, really perfectly resonated with me and uh, got me to where I am over the last like four years, basically. Awesome. Well, um, maybe before we chit chat a little bit toward the end about just, you know, other stuff. Um, tell us a little bit about the Havamal. The Havamal, the words of Har, as it will. Har is uh, uh, one of the other um, names for, for Odin. Um, I forget what it means off the top of my head here, um, but with the uh, with the Havamal, it is um, the equivalency of the Book of Proverbs in the Bible, um, and it is just um, it's various different levels of wisdom um, for any man uh, to uh, better himself, uh, if you will. Um, and uh, I'm just yep. Okay, bear with me. Uh, bear with me one second here. Sure. Yep. Yep. No problem. Yeah. Yep. Bear with me one second here. Just uh, I'm gonna pull up the Havamal real fast in uh, in the Edda, and I just need to turn off my my camera just for uh, uh, people passing through. <laughs> oh no worries. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's what I gotta deal with. All right, I think we're all <laughs> all right. Um, whoops. Okay, like turn it back on. All right, and there may be another pass through coming through. Could only get I can only get so much studio privacy during the day. <laughs> no worries. Uh, okay, so um, l let me just kick it off. I'll, I'll give you the examples that just come um right off uh, right off the top uh with with it you know in fact uh let me um there we go this is uh this is my favorite um uh translation of the havamal uh of the eddas in general that i've done so far which is by uh chris holm is the name of the author who translated from the old norse which you can see the old norse on the left um which is the best recollection we can of what's connected to the oral tradition and uh, so stanza one uh, goes, watch out and check all gates before faring forth. One should spy around, one should pry around. Hard to know what foe sits before you in the next room. 
So um, it opens itself up with be careful about walking into a trap. Don't walk into traps in life. Have situational awareness, right? You know, uh, the Havamal is considerably for um, for those who are uh, brave in uh, in their in their stature. Uh, hold on a second. Um, yep. Um, and if we run through this, you know, you go through uh, several stanzas, and uh, here's twenty as a good example about. Um, hold on a second. That should be over with for now. <laughs> Let me get back on the uh, darn it on the video. Where'd the thing go? Shoot. Hold on. I got too many windows open now. I've caused my own confusion. I like this. The greedy man without minds and wits eats himself in sorrow. Often he brings ridicule on himself when he's among wise men who mock the man's belly. Because yes. he's eating sorrow. All right. There we go. I'm back. All right. Yeah. So um, uh, let's see. Whoops. Uh, whoop. Oh, my God. I so they're basically off. like proverbs, like you said. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But they're it, it, it's it's very different. It's very very different than uh, than what you get out of the concepts of, of 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 biblical proverbs, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, here's like one thirty four. When you're getting way down towards the end here, right? Uh, there's a a number of these which talk about uh uh. Uh, uh, there's a conversation occurring with a king named Lod Fafnir, kind of similar to Fafnir, who is a dwarf who turned into a dragon that Tolkien based Smaug upon. Mm. <laughs> and uh, so he's talking to him, and he's and he tell and he's uh, and he gives you read, um, R E D E, which I think that I think read means like to tell you something and heed it well. You will use it if you learn it. And so like those two lines are like repeated over and over again during uh, uh, this part of it. Um, and then it goes, it will get you good if you understand it. Never laugh at the hoary sage. The old often speak wisely and clearly. Wise speech often comes from the dried skin that hangs with the hides dangling with the furs and swinging among the bushes. Right. So it's it's basically saying, like, if you've met somebody, you know, out there who's been in the world, who is old, you know, they're a survivor, uh, they've seen a whole lot of things, you know, it's it's all that basic stuff about like, you can expect wi wisdom from elders. Now, of course, when this was written, um, nobody knew laziness. <laughs> so you can be old and not wise because of comforts. And things like that um uh, uh uh but this is true in the world where you are old and you you lived uh and you lived in strength and you know you didn't let um weakness guide your life path and that's the kind of uh that's the kind of wisdom that gets uh referred to and so it is believed that this is core this is like the gnosis of odin this is the this is uh this is like logos but it's coming uh from odin himself and it's just it's just the wisdom of the indo-european peoples in a consolidated uh fashion and that's uh that's what the havamal of of the collection of the poetic eddas uh is all about there are uh, words in here for uh, how to treat women. There's words in here uh, being wary about alcohol. Um, there's words in here about when to speak and when not to speak, so on and so forth. All, all these different things. And um, you will see um, a Havamalic um, uh, 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 state of mind coming out of any well-written Norse saga. Uh, with the men of honor and, uh, and 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 the reasoning behind uh, the way uh, they treat towards one another. Why did this man earn another's disrespect? Why did a man earn another's respect? Right? Matters like this. That's in the Havamal. I like it. it kind of reminds me 
of the Tao in a way, the Tao Te Ching. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, we were talking earlier about um, fire and air and water and stuff. Mm. So that, <clears throat> this would be more of the fire application, I guess you could say, where the Tao would be more of the wind, of the air. Mm. Mm. Good call. Thank you. Yeah. It seems to have a more fiery tone to it, you know? Yeah, totally. Precisely, precisely. And and, and that can scare people. I I, I recently uh, uploaded a video about um, the issue uh, that comes with people, even if they're like more spiritually minded people, um, just with shadow work and with uh, 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 the primal nature of uh of of paganism and 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 stuff that comes from odin isn't even as primal as the stuff that you like i said that you get from like those vanir gods which are the earth gods but there's definitely still primalism because like the wolf spirit uh is more uh uh, akin to the to the aesir um in most respects especially because of all the uh the wolves associated with uh with odin or the wolves associated with loki uh who's not an aesir but um he is uh but his 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 spirit um uh is definitely not um that's a complicated subject yeah loki is is inherently complicated (laughs) yeah Um, i'm sure but yeah yeah so um yeah so uh uh uh, people get put off by by this this manner of the um of the of the really strong like no bullshit capable of violence man right regardless of how noble or good he is um if you are like afraid of those that would use force to solve problems under the assumption that force is never necessary um, and should never be even expressed, let alone used, right? Like there's always an expression of, I am here, I stand my ground, this is my honor, right? There's, there's always these kinds of, uh, of, of themes that go on here. And it's just like, this is my sacred space to burn as my heart desires. Awesome. Well, we are, as Crow says, getting to close to the second hour. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I guess I wanted to, I know you'll tell people where you're located and stuff, but maybe just mm-hmm. give us a little bit of a, a background on how you started podcasting and, and maybe an idea for some of the topics you cover and um, how people can find you because I know there's a lot of material on your, on Mm -hmm. your um, YouTube channel. By 2012, I had realized um, that um, it's, it seems like it's up to me to take everything that I learned and to put it out there somewhere to help people think, you know, to help them solve the problems uh, uh, going on with the world of conspiracies and, and, and personal development and, and all these different things. By 2012, I had decided I wanted to do that. And, uh, through, um, going around, like listening to various alt media, whatever is, I, I eventually found the attention of the people at revolution radio, which is where my my email comes from, the freedomslips.com that was the original website domain for Revolution Radio. Um, and I was a, and I became a host there to do that stuff for a long time while I was also doing YouTube. Um, during a part of my process, I committed digital seppuku a few years ago and uh, restarted uh, my YouTube channel from scratch, deleting a whole lot of things that um, uh, uh, that I just needed to, to lift off my chest, including some things I was sad to part with like memories of my bearded dragons and things like that. Um, and so, um, uh, uh, so like at that point I just started, um, uh, finding the time to put in, to say like, look at this thing I studied, I'm putting it together. This is my understanding of it. I think you'll understand it. Uh, or maybe I'm just talking crazy, but I got to get it out. 
And so, you know, I, I, I put together these rants or, 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 or something prepared, or I want to read something uh, to you and then, and then talk about it and all that stuff. And, um, and then I'm also just going through my personal development journey, not just being some sort of, uh, um, of a, uh, research analyst not a researcher but a research analyst i'm looking at other people's research and i'm 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 collating it together that's awesome so um i guess before we um end the call can you tell us about your pet iguana oh why yes i can um let me uh let me take a minute to go grab lock l-o-c-h i named him after the scottish word for lake Loch Ness I, because I've um, of Norman descent and I didn't want to be cliche and name name him Nessie so I named him Locke instead without thinking of it I'm like hey, you know like subconsciously that's naming him Loki isn't it you know so like <laughs> there you go and and uh, and, uh, and iguana is a perfect uh, you know it's, it's it's yeah there's definitely that because um, the reptiles are great because of the relate, you know, you learn a relationship with the reptilian brain, which is learning uh, to have a relationship with your nervous system, with your lower self and, um, and, uh, and, and just your interaction on a, on a, um, on a reactionary level, uh, and it's disciplined, self-controlled and fearless level, uh, mm. with the, uh, with the rest of the world. So give me a second to go grab him from his high uh, station, uh, so that way my reptilian handler can grace us with his presence. Okay. <laughs> Looks like we might have to look into the Hava Mall a little more, maybe start quoting it on the show or something. Yeah, I haven't ever read it, but I've been wanting to for a while, ever since um, our dear friend Warlock mentioned it uh, like many moons ago. <laughs> I also love the classic G.I. Joe uh, lunchbox in the background. That's great. Oh, you see it? I don't even see it. Ah, there he is. There's oh. little lock. Little yes. low key. Oh, yeah. Little, little lock. Little low key. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to at least have my glove on one hand this particular time spare myself a little bit of pain <laughs> hey buddy I usually, I usually just take the pain and my my hand takes the cuts but mm -hmm. i don't feel like dealing with it today yeah there he is and what does he do like what um just chills all day he just chills all day um climbs around and jumps around um but yeah no everything everything's pretty relaxed you know because he's he's fed he's watered he just likes to have his his high place, has a good time. Awesome. And that's like, and that's like the funny thing about reptiles is like, we always think about reptiles in the context of when we watch them doing stuff and whatever, like a reptile is literally always in a meditative state, except when they're not. <laughs> it's, 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 it's simple. Like, like they just in between basic animal needs, they'll just sit there and look at stuff and they'll just sit there like that lounging lounging lizards you ever heard about lounging lizards like that you know it's just like yeah yeah that's what he'll do you know he'll just he'll he'll chill up in a tree and then if he gets hungry or if he has to poop he'll go where he wants to go to do those particular things so on and so forth um and and once in a while you know he'll he'll get an energy kind of rush and he'll want to like scurry around a little bit in the cage or something like that what kind of cage is it? Um, I built it uh, because they don't make cages uh, big enough for iguanas. Um, so I uh, I did some carpentry work uh, on my own. Had to buy all sorts of materials by Home Depot. And I built like this seven foot tall structure that I have in the living room upstairs now. Uh, it's like a giant cabinet size kind of thing. Um, and uh you know i had to build uh the lighting fixtures into the roof and the uh and the uh whatchamacallit the um the humidifier uh, mm. uh system uh into it as well and and put the timer up and it's built with like wood and chicken wire and lots of uh 
I figured lots chicken of, wire. Lots of screws and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's not very heavy, um, but it's a pain in the butt if I have to get on top of it because it's seven feet tall and I'm I'm five six. Couple, just just a couple of rogans over here folks i'm i'm built like a dwarf <laughs> Dwarf. <laughs> what was the dwarf's name the most famous one on the, on lord of the rings gimli gimli gimli, gimli. gimli. <laughs> son of gloin oh that's awesome mm-hmm. well Thank you for coming on our show and thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge on Norse mythology and um, everything that, well, not everything, but as much as we possibly could fit into. Oh, for sure. For sure. (laughs) You guys got a lot of footnotes. You go to my, you go to my channel. Listen, I try to organize the really juicy stuff into playlists. Go browse my playlists. You'll get an idea. Awesome. So just a reminder to everybody where they can find you. Yep. You, um, if you look through my, for my name across most of social me- media, you're going to find me, uh, the Zerolath at freedom slips.com email that I mentioned earlier, Zerolath YouTube channel, which is where I do most of my primary activity. Um, you get notifications about something like that. Zerolath, uh, divinations on Facebook, which also you can contact me there too about, um, about, uh, getting a tarot and rune reading. Um, and uh you know i'm i'm on miwi and all these other places you just gotta look up zerolath basically awesome and well you'll, silly you'll, me uh, you'll see it all in those social medias too all the links are on everybody else's links awesome and dare i ask and maybe not make it like super long but how did you come up with the name zerolath um, ancient Etruscan tapping into the Italian side that I get from my mother. Mm-hmm. I was looking up Etruscan words and, uh, uh, the word Zeri means like a free individual or like, it even kind of means like the number one in, in a certain context, I think. Uh, but you know, uh, I saw the, the definition of a free individual and Zalath, and I, uh, which means a cultural functionary, kind of like a shaman, if you will. Mm. So I put the Zaloth and the Zeri together to make Zaroloth. <laughs> well, it's very clever Lovely. and yeah. it's unique. Very and unique. it's you. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Very well, awesome. Let's give a shout out to the chat. Thank you guys for hanging out so much. It's like the favorite part of our week. We always say that we have the best listeners, the best Sharonites over Sharonites. <laughs> And Zerolath is often in there, so I'm sure he'll be in here right now. So if you yep. want to say anything to him, you could just come to the chat and say it right in there. And if you have any questions for him, just put them right under below this video, wherever you see it, and we'll make sure that he sees it yep. if he doesn't see it right away on his own. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get. Uh, I'm gonna try to get the day off. Uh, uh, the the day after this premieres. <laughs> oh, good idea. Okay, that way I can. Go. That way I don't have to go to bed early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, call. You. Awesome. And uh, well, what else is I going to say? What do, what do we say at the end of the show? Oh, yeah. So if you have any questions or whatever, let us know. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Go check out his stuff because it's packed with gravy. He talks, I mean, so much more extensively than he could talk in this short period that he shared with us. So go check it out. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and doing... as you can imagine from my references to Mongolia, mm-hmm. I have quite an interesting take on uh, Tartarian concepts. And uh, I came up with ideas that then you are came up with after I had said them. So that's on the record. <laughs> that's yeah, cool. there you go. Exactly. So check it out. And, let uh, you know, if you do, to- yeah, I can't even talk right now. If you do check him out, comment on his stuff and let him know that you saw him on the Oversharing Show. This way he knows that and he could pay us our royalty fee. Just kidding. Uh- and let them know where they can support us. Yeah, go to morelawsmoreproblems.com, click on the oversharing tab, and there's several ways that you could support us there. And the best way you could support us is just by showing up in the chat every Thursday night and hanging out with us and leaving comments, thumbs up on our videos, and overshare with anyone that you think might interest uh, be interested in this content. We don't want you to woke rape people, though, but you know, you know how it goes. <laughs> um, oh, there he goes. Yep. I had to chilling. grab him from up there. Nice. Oh, he's chilling. Oh. Oh, there he goes. Dun, 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 see, dun. see how many things he knocks over this time. 
He's <laughs> always, I'm always gambling how many things he's going to knock over. Uh oh. That's funny. He might just sit there. He might poop. You never know. Uh, <laughs> no, don't you dare. <laughs> I got too many things over there that I don't want to see with nitrates and salmonella. <laughs> exactly. There he goes. Come on, climb it. Climb it. That's what they want to see. Perform, circus monkey. <laughs> right. <laughs> there he is. There he goes. He's getting up there. Oh, wow. Oh, look at blackout that. curtains. <laughs> well, at least he gets a lot of exercise. Yeah. That's awesome. It is, it's, it's, it's fun watching him when he is trying to go places and things like that. <laughs> yeah, I got to imagine it's very zen-like. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, right, well, it's cool. <laughs> thanks for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. And really appreciate all your knowledge, just like Sharon was saying. And uh, what do we say to the good people, Sharon? That if you're not over Sharon... Then you're totally not Karen. That's right. So share and overshare. Uh... All right, everybody. Oh, I guess.